Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bara habita fillah This is our last sitting uh, in the dars regarding the benefits of la ilaha illallah or the conditions for la ilaha illallah and we talked about the last condition, which was muhabba, which is loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or muhabba, loving what uh, comes with the shahada. You know, loving Allah, wa rasul, obedience to Allah, wa rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we were talking about also the benefits of loving the mu'mineen, and that this is a from the haquq, or rights of the believers. And this is a part of loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with regards to that, there are some beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that we will uh, finish up with before we finish the treaties. And the first one, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال سبعة يظلهم الله في ذله يوم لا ذل إلا ذله الإمام عادل وشاب نشأ في عبادة ربه ورجل قلبه معلق في المساجد ورجلان تحبا في الله اجتمعا عليه وتفارقا عليه ورجل طلبته امرأة ذات المنصب والجمال فقال إني أخاف الله ورجل تصدق أخفى حتى لا تعلم شماله ما تنفق يمينه ورجل ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه رواه بخاري ومسلم إن الحديث إن بخاري المسلم الحديث بأبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه who narrated on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, seven people who will be shaded from the shade of Allah on the day when there will be no shade except his shade. Meaning that most of the people will be in the sun. And they will be, this is a part of the, uh, the torment of the day of judgment the difficulty and the hardship that people will experience Yom al -Qiyama. So the Prophet ﷺ said there will be seven who will have this shade that no one else will have on the Day of Judgment. And he said, the first one is Al-Imam Adil. This shows how important it is for the Imams, for the leaders, the Muslim leaders. And even people who are leaders in their communities to be just. Because if you oppress, you will get it on Yom Al You will get it, if not, look at the way we've seen how many leaders who the people thought were practically invincible who were killed in the most humiliated way and they were known for their oppression. Like Gaddafi, like Saddam Hussein, like Ali Abdullah Saleh. And they were all known for immense oppression in their countries, regardless of how they changed and were nice with some people and some, but they oppressed in prison and killed many people and corrupted their societies in various ways. The opposite of their example is the Imam Adil, the just Imam, the one who leads the people in righteousness and goodness and is just with the people. He's not oppressing the people and he's fair with the people. This is one of the people on the Day of Judgment who will receive the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows the great responsibility and that the person who fulfills that responsibility, they're rewarded with goodness. The one who uh, breaks that trust or corrupts, uh, is corrupted and corrupts, then they will have a horrid ending perhaps in this life, as an example for others, and definitely in the hereafter. Wallahu musta'an. The second one, he said, Ashab nasha fi ibadati rabbi. He said, a youth, a, a, a youth who was raised on Islam, 
Their whole life they were Muslim and they were raised on Islam and they were, you know, righteous tarbiyah and they were doing righteousness their whole life. This is one of the people. So you guys have this chance, be idnillah, because you guys were born Muslim your whole life. You don't know kufr, you don't know shirk, walillah and hamd. And if you practice your Islam and do good, you can be of those people who is uh, has the shade on, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day when there will be no shade except His. And for only these select people. And the other one is a man whose heart was attached to the masjids. That means this is the one he comes early for all his salats. He loves the salat. They say about some of the salaf that they never, some of them, they never, the people never saw except their back because they were always in the front row. Their whole life, always racing and feeling sadness if they weren't in the front row. So it shows that their hearts, you know, people who come early to the masjid regularly, no matter what, that their hearts are attached to the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala alone. So this is one of the people. And then the other is two people who love one another for the sake of Allah and they come together for the sake of Allah and they separate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're also the people who will have the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. They strictly loved each other, not for anything else. They didn't say, well, we're from the same tribe, we're from the same race, we're from the same nationality, we're both Pakistani, we're both from Kashmir, we're both from Somalia, we're both African American. They didn't they, they came together only because they saw the characteristics of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one another's faith, and they saw that one that they each uh, were from what they could judge from Ahl Iman. And they loved each other strictly for that sake. No other reason. And they came together in Ta'awun al Abir wa Taqwa. They cooperate in righteousness and God fearfulness. These are those people. Those people who cooperate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have this Ta'awun. That these people will be some of the people who will be shaded on the Day of Judgment. And a man who a beautiful woman who has great status. Maybe she's from a high status. She's a wealthy woman. She's a well-known woman, famous woman. And she's beautiful. And she calls that man to do haram. And he refuses. This is for the shade is for the man, not for the woman. He refuses her call. She calls him to zina or some kind of evil. And he says, Inni akhaf Allah. Verily, I fear Allah. That's the only reason I want to get with you, but I fear Allah. That I'm not doing it. I fear Allah. This one is one of the ones who will be shaded because this is one of the greatest fitna and temptations for the men. The Prophet ﷺ said that, in an awla fitna fi bani Israel, kanafi nisa. The first fitna or trial that the children of Is Israel were faced with was the women. So the man who restrains himself only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no other reason, he just said, No, I'm afraid of Allah, I don't want to go to the hellfire, I don't want to do disobedience to Allah. This one will be from those who are shaded on Yom al And a man who gave sadaqah. And he gave so much sadaqah, so much charity, uh, that he didn't even know how much he spent. His right hand doesn't know what his left hand spends. That means he's always spending. He doesn't know. He just always giving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't count how much he spends and how much he sends and how much he does this, but he spends strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he had the correct intention. This person will also be shaded on the Day of Judgment. And a man who remembers Allah, not necessarily a man, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a man or a woman, that remembers Allah when they're alone and they cry. Their, their tears, be, their eyes become welled up and swelled up from tears 
because they love Allah and they cry and no one else sees them. They could be just wasting their time on video games and films and this and that. And that. But this person is in the depths of the night crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making tawbah, asking Allah for forgiveness. This one is from those who will be shaded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Yom al Qiyamah. And the point of this hadith, the why do we mention this hadith? Because this hadith shows what? A rajalani to hibba fillahi ijtami'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Two people who love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they come together for the sake of Allah, because they, they, they love each other for the sake of Allah, and they separate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this, this is the point of that, of, of showing, and this shows love for the Ahl Iman, love for the Mu'mineen. وَحَدِيثْ أَنَسْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنْعَنْهُ ثَلَاثَ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجِلَ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِمَانِ وَفِيهِ أَنْ يَهَبَّ الْمَرْئِ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أو إِلَّا لِلَّهِ So it's the hadith of Anas رضي الله تنعن that's in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said uh, three people that if they contain these characteristics, they've tasted the sweetness of faith, the sweetness of Iman. And in the Hadith, he mentioned that a man loves another person only for no other reason except for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So by loving your brother or your sister uh, in, in Islam strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is immensely rewarded, and that's from the sweetness of Iman. And that is, those, those are from the characteristics of some of the people who will be shaded on the, on the Day of Judgment. وَعَنَ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنْعَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تُدْخُلُونَ جَنَّةَ حَتَّ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّ تُحَابُوا أَوَلَا أَدَلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَبَّبْتُمْ أَفْشُوا السَّلَامْ بَيْنَكُمْ In a hadith in Sahih Muslim, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تنعنه, he said that the Prophet, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will not enter paradise until you believe. And you don't believe until you love one another. Should I show you something which if you do it, it will cause you to love each other? And then he said, uh, give the salams between one another. So by giving salams, this is an illustration of Iman and love. And we find this in our real in our lives when you, especially as men, I don't know as women if you guys do this as much, but as men, a lot of times, doesn't matter which country, I don't care if I'm in Indonesia, Ethiopia, here in Saudi Arabia, in the airport, going, seeing someone comes out of the bathroom and I'm going in the bathroom. And we say, salam, salam alaikum. We say it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we greet one another. Spreading the salams. Or sometimes you see someone, you see that they look from Ahli Iman, you just see... He looks like he's, you know, a person who holds on to his religion. So you have a, a, an inclination and a love for him, and you say, As-salamu alaykum, and he might notice something about you and think, and you, 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 you have that connection. And that connection is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you see that, you believe that that individual is from Ahli Iman, as a person who loves Allah. And the shahid here is spreading the salams. This spreads love. So, in the hadith, in a hadith, the strongest part of the man is loving and hating for the sake of Allah. Ibn, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu said, Whoever loves for the sake of Allah and hates for the sake of Allah is loyal for the sake of Allah and has enmity for the sake of Allah, then he obtains the alliance of Allah due to that. So loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hating those things he hates, this is how you gain the assistance and help and support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sheikh then said, what, is be what has become common amongst the people uh, today is a brotherhood based upon the affairs of the dunya, which does not benefit people in anything. 
Hassan al-Basri and other than him from the Salaf mentioned that there were a people who claimed the love of Allah, Azza wa Jal. So Allah tried them with this ayat, saying, O Muhammad, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Uh, Allah will forgive you and forgive you of your sins. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Say, obey Allah and the messenger. But if they turn away, then Allah does not like the disbelievers. In Ali Imran, Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Muhammad ibn Sinan narrated to us that Falih said that Hilal ibn Ali narrated to us on the authority of Atta ibn Yasir, on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Everyone from my ummah will enter paradise except the one who refuses to enter. Then they, they asked, O Messenger of Allah, who would refuse? You know, it's a logical question. Who would refuse Jannah? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever obeys me enters paradise, and whoever disobeys me has refused to enter. Disobe disobedience to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is refusing to enter paradise. Bukhari said, Muhammad ibn uh, uh, Ubadah informed us that Yazid narrated to us that Sa uh, Salim, and he, and he praised him, narrated to us that Sa'id ibn Mina narrated to us, or I heard Jabir or ibn Abdullah say, some angels come to the Prophet ﷺ, came to the Prophet ﷺ while he was sleeping. Some of them said, he is sleeping. Others said, his eyes are sleeping, but his heart is awake. Then they said, there is an example for this companion of yours. One of them said, then set forth an example for him. Some of them said, he is sleeping. The other said, his eyes are sleeping, but his heart is awake. Then they said, his example is of a man who built a house then offered a banquet therein, and sent in a messenger to invite the people. So whoever accepted the invitation of the, inv of the person who invited them entered the house and ate of the banquet. And whoever did not accept the invitation of the inviter did not enter the house, nor did he eat of the banquet. Then the angel said, interpret this example to him so that he may understand it. Some of them said, he is sleeping. The other said, his eyes are sleeping, but his heart is awake. Then they said, the house stands for paradise, and the caller is Muhammad. Whoever obeys Muhammad obeys Allah, and whoever disobeys Muhammad disobeys Allah. Muhammad distinguished between the people, uh, distinguished between the people, between truth and falsehood, and the believers from the disbelievers. Here it should be known, then the sheikh said, here it should be known that the test testification la ilaha illallah is not complete except with the testification that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you have to have the shahad attained. It should also be known that loving Allah azza wa jal cannot be complete except by loving what he loves and disliking what he dislikes. There is no way to knowing what Allah ta'ala loves and is pleased with or what he dislikes and rejects except by following what the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered and keeping keeping away from what he prohibited. That's very important because a lot of people, they say, they, they claim that they love what Allah loves, uh, but they say, we don't have to follow the Prophet We just follow our Shaykh. Or, we, uh, you know, we just believe in the Quran. We don't, hadiths have been tampered with, hadiths are not authentic, some are sahih, some are daif. This is what some of the people say. But in fact, they're rejecting Islam. They're rejecting the Quran because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa Allah, wa rusul. Follow Allah, obey Allah, and obey the Messenger. And how do we obey the Messenger? By following the Sunnah of the Prophet. So Allah necessitates loving the Messenger of Allah, believing in him and following him. This is why loving Allah is con uh, connected to loving the Messenger in many places in the Quran, such as the saying of Allah say, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear and decline, and the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, and serving hard and fighting in His cause, then wait until Allah brings about His decision, meaning the torment. And Allah guides not the people who are al-fasakun, meaning the rebellious, wicked people. And there are many ayat like this, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Thus ends our study of this 
very beneficial treaties. And anything I said that was correct with some Allah Azzawajal, anything I said that was incorrect with some myself in the Shaitan, was some Allah Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam.